Welcome to Iowa Pagan News, your informative internet radio station catering to all pagans worldwide. We are dedicated to bringing you the very best in music, news, events, and lots of fun stuff. Come tune into our new podcast at www.plrdn.podbean.com. Now, here's your host, Lou Silverwolf Williams. Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to a Friday edition of Iowa Pagan News on the Prairie Land Radio Network. And this is going to be, uh, like I said, it's going to be a little bit different on Fridays. I'm going to be doing a series on the uh, writings that uh, I've been accumulating over the last few years. This is going to be one of those. And is even considered to be a write-up that I presented to the Unitarian Church back a few years ago, which I was very proud of, very honored to be asked to do it. Um, Went over very well, had a lot of great input from it, uh, which I'm really anxious to be able to share this with you tonight. There will be a part of it where uh, I will open it up for discussion because uh, there's going to be a couple of questions that I'll be asking of everyone tonight. So for those of you who are tuning in, appreciate it. And if you want to join me live on cam, I also posted up the uh, link to join me here in the studio on my Facebook page and on the business page for IAPN radio. So if you'd like to join me on cam, feel free to do so. Otherwise, let's get right into it. Title of this one is called Walking a Ancient Spiritual Path. Let's start off by a question. What is a pagan? Over thousands of years, pagans have been known as people who do not practice or follow a Christian path. Paganism is a broad umbrella term to describe many spiritual paths and practices. Now myself, I personally follow a eclectic spiritual path of antiquity, which to me means that I still value the old ways of paganism. And I also incorporate my Native American spiritual beliefs along with the pagan because to me, they both go hand in hand with each other uh, because it pays respects to the spirits of the earth, fire, water, and air. Now, in 2007, while I was doing some searching on my family name, I came across an old Indian chief from the 1800s. His name is Chief John Williams. He was from the uh, Tonkawa tribe, which originated out of southeastern Texas until they were moved to Oklahoma by the military when uh, they were shutting down all the forts in Texas. I spent a great deal of time learning more about him and the people of the Tonkawa tribe, who were also known as by the Karankawa, which means people of the wolf also means people of the prairie. Um, They were a social welcoming tribe with uh, other uh, neighboring tribes as well, even though they did have kind of a bad rep back then. uh, Because I here just a short time ago learned a little bit more about them. Um, And the history on them, not all that great, but they're still an honorable tribe. I also found a black and white photo of him. And when I saw this picture, it was like seeing an image of my own father. Now, before I made this discovery, I was just beginning to understand more about paganism because I entered the community back in 2003. This was another step forward and discovering more about my spirituality, but also more about my lineage and heritage. And I had already sensed a connection to the Tonkawa spirituality 
And this validated that feeling as well. I'm going to be sharing a picture of him uh, in just a brief minute here. And I'm going to be pulling up his picture so that everyone can see it. I um, also want to say good evening to Akasha. Thank you for tuning in. And also to my very close friend, Danny Thompson, up in Minneapolis. Um, and I'm. it always makes me happy to have everyone come join me. It really means a lot. Uh, so basically, if you give me just a brief second here, um, I should have had this brought up earlier, but I'm going to make the best of it here. Um, here we go. Okay, okay, yeah, here we go. Okay, now this is who would be my uh, my great great grandfather. And those who know me and who can see the resemblance is that he does resemble both my father. Some other people say that uh, they they recognize me uh, from that picture as well. Now, the antiquity part of that spirituality means that I put value into the old traditional ways of how pagans lived from years past and how they practiced their own paths and creating magic within themselves, which was taught to them by their parents and elders of how to utilize herbs, roots, and the very essence of what is given to us by Mother Earth. Those who practiced and performed said magic would sometimes be labeled as a witch doctor or medicine woman or medicine man. Most times in the old days, that person would live in a small village that may not have had anyone in the area considered to be known as a healer. And by using their knowledge of the roots, herbs, and earth magic to heal the sick, those medicine men or women were widely accepted for doing so by those who would accept the healing. So that gives you a little bit of a rundown of the heritage that I come from and also being a known as a healer myself, being a former EMT, current first responder, I take pride in having that knowledge and coming from that background. For me, the antiquity also means that paying respect to our elders and to the spirits of nature and the earth. It also means getting back to the way our ancestors lived years ago, as most of us have become so accustomed to having things readily available to us. Now, when we join together for ritual to give blessings to each season of the year, we join hands in a circle to invite the spirits of the four corners of the earth to join us in our rituals. We welcome them with open hearts and minds to let those spirits know we acknowledge their presence. Myself, I do like to attend rituals in open parks, camping sites, or forest even. You're going to know that uh, with most all pagans, witches, and others who follow on earth, our earth-centered spiritual path will tell you that nature is their church. I gain strength from the natural world. I believe that the spirits of our ancestors and the spirits of the elements are always around us, protecting and guiding us. It does seem that many people have denounced paganism as being evil. 
thinking we worship the devil and dance around fires naked out in public. <laughs> the majority of people who practice paganism will tell you that we are the most accepting and friendly folk you will ever encounter. We do not force our religion on anyone or try to convert those who openly seek out other forms of spirituality. And here's the funny part. We do not always dance naked around bonfires. Those of us here in the Midwest tend to keep our clothes on because the weather is often unpredictable. Plus, public nudity is illegal in most neighborhoods in all 50 states. Hmm. So that I'm kind of dispersing with that information so that uh, we can get away from that old dogma stigmatism that the church has instilled on everybody. Because that simply is not the case. We are not evil. We do not believe in Satan. We do not believe in the hell. Um, what else? Um, we don't like I said, we don't force our religion upon anybody. We don't go out and purposely put hexes and spells on people. That's just not the case. Now, granted, there are those in the community, which is just a small percentage, very small percentage, that, yeah, they do pra practice magic in a way that would influence somebody's w personal will. But we all live by a code on the Wiccan read. Do as you will and harm none. There is a lot more to the Wiccan read than just that phrase. But that is the golden rule that we do live by and we stand by. We do not do anything that will impede upon somebody's personal will. That's just not how things are done. Anybody who says otherwise, they're lying. And I'm going to flat out call them out on it. Now, I have spent many hours talking with respected elders, authors, and artists in the community to learn exactly what it means to follow a path of paganism. And by getting to know these mentors and conveying the information and their experiences to others has been an important job. I believe I have a spiritual calling to educate people about the various rich traditions of paganism. And looking back to that point, it occurred to me that I was meant to allow others in my life who were following similar paths, who were teaching me what paganism truly is. Now, if people have comments for me along this road tonight, Feel free to put them in. I gladly welcome any and all input. Uh, be sure to join us in chat. Uh, again, if you want to join me live on cam, you can do that as well, because I did post up the link that you can use in the business page for Iowa Pagan News and also on my personal page for those of you who are connected to me directly. By introducing me to books, music, writings, and by the ancient history of the mysticism and the magic of this earth-centered religion, each person was showing me what I was needing to give myself a sense of purpose. Being pagan means being open and not scared of the unknown. This is very similar to what we, what, okay, it's very similar to what um, the people at the uh, Unitarian Church strive by with their seven principles. And that's going to be a whole different conversation for a later time. Uh, but 
I'm very happy to be able to share my pagan spirituality with all of you and to be a voice for pagans both locally and across the world. And that means also across the pond, uh, over into the UK and other areas, because a lot of people have come to know me over the years with uh, the good friendships, the rapport, and just the open communication that I have with a lot of people in the community. And not just elders and all the bands, singer-songwriters, vocalists, authors, uh, it also includes uh, metaphysical and holistic shop owners who I've come to know um, and just people in general in the community. But I need your help and strength to continue to be that voice as I'm only one person. I urge all of you to stand strong in your faith and spiritual paths. And to quote a uh, fellow reverend, Reverend Marta Valentin, the power of a community is deeper and stronger than the power of any one individual can ever possess. And that's also I stand by. And that's what I have strived and worked for very hard here at Iowa Pagan News is to do what I can to help educate, to help unite the pagan community, to do away with the division, the bad-mouthing, the old stigma that the church has instilled into everybody, and to get people to start working together, to stand together, be there to help support each other, to help teach others. That part is very important and critical to me. And with um, the, the writings that I've been doing over the last few years, it's just my own thoughts upon how I see things in the community. And I hope that by doing these sessions, open sessions like this, it will help to encourage people to do what I'm doing. And there's also something that uh, I also wanted to include with this is that with all of the different aspects of paganism, whether that be Native American, Druidism, Odinism, uh, Buddha, um, this also, basically it also includes the Satanists. And before people get started on any kind of kick with Satanists, some of those people are the nicest people that you'll ever come across. And I believe it was either Florida or Alabama that uh, the one of the cities allowed the Satan, uh, the Satanist group to put up a statue of Baphomet. And the argument that they had put up at the time was that either you be spiritually inclusive or nothing at all. And the city council did not have a leg to stand on. They were perfectly fine with it, so they allowed the statue to be put up. And it's a very, really nice statue, too. Um, there's nothing offensive about it. It is done in very good taste and something that uh, I would encourage people to look into. Um, there are also a couple of churches over in Rome that are still standing today with uh, pagan figurines, symbolism, and there are a lot of areas now over in the UK that are getting back to following pagan origins. 
and getting away from organized religion. Now, in a discussion I had with one of our elders, who is also an author, Tamara Forslin in Australia, she one of her recent books was on pagan elders. And it, she went through and listed every single one of them from the past up to current. There's a section in that book that talks of the pagan census. It basically shows us that from the early 2000s up till now, that our numbers have been growing exponentially. And within the next five to six years, those numbers are actually going to double because people are getting away from the church and organized religion and seeking out other forms of spiritual paths that relate to them personally. And myself, when I came into this in 2003, I had, granted, I will admit that uh, I grew up going to the Methodist church as a kid, going to Sunday school. Um, and then when I was growing up, getting involved with the non-denominational route and that's a whole another discussion as well. All I will say is this. The reason why I walk away from that. Because of my observations of seeing people who value their position in the community, their high stature, their financial status, they put that over everything else. And I'm like, no, that is not for me. I refused to get involved with them and walked away from it. And once I was introduced to a local cups group back in 2003, it meant the world of difference to me. It made a lot more sense. And it's something that I still value and cherish to this day. Now, Danny has put up a uh, comment for us. And I know, uh, I already know what path that she's on. Uh, she is a Christian, but also very flexible and open for myself. <laughs> I love Bemidji. Or, uh, for, those, uh, for those up in Min or Minnesota, Bermidji <laughs> would be the proper uh, term. <laughs> Even though I've only been up in that area once. Uh <laughs> but not just because of childhood memories. Uh, I also feel connected to the uh, Anishinaabe people and how they connect to the earth. Uh, and I've come to know a few of the Anishinaabes. They are great people. And I, I honor my brothers and sisters of that tribe. She has several CDs of the Anishinaabe music, and I find them to bring a peace to my soul that nothing else does. And I would agree with you, Danny, completely. I would agree with you 100% on that. Um, there is actually one, uh, one person in the Native community who means a lot to me, and I consider him to be my brother. He is a Native American flutist in Oregon, Jan Michael Looking Wolf. And I would definitely tell people to look him up. You'll enjoy his music because he combines the Native American flute with traditional, or I should say mainstream uh, music. And the mixture of the two, mm, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I know a lot of other people will too. So be sure to look him up. Jan Michael Looking Wolf. Now, like you said, these series are only going to be about a half hour in length. Um, I am going to see what I can do to extend them out a little bit. But they're designed to be half hour long uh, statements. And to something that I wanted to share with all of you on this day 
And for the next uh, two to three weeks on Fridays, I'll be presenting uh, different conversations. I think everyone will enjoy. I'm going to take a quick commercial break and to hear from our sponsors. And then I'll be right back with a little bit more for you. And wish then uh, wish everyone a pleasant journeys and uh, have a good weekend. But uh, stick around here for just a few more minutes. I've still got a little bit more information I want to share with all of you. I just walked into this coffee shop. You'll never guess what I found. All the help is deeply engrossed in metaphysical times. You should, too. I'm at the Egyptian, 475 Park Avenue in Idaho Falls, Idaho. You get your very own coffee for free, and we're open till 10. Sister Moon, Apothecary and More is a collaboration of local island witches bringing you handcrafted tools for ritual, amazing apothecary, custom vinyl work, merchandise, and so much more. But we are not just an online store. We are a sisterhood, a platform, and a voice for everything that is magical. Join us for our famous Tarot Tuesdays from 11 to 4 Eastern Standard Time for a discounted reading with our amazing in-house intuitive reader and priestess, Wolf Spirit Energy, Beverly Oberlin. You can find us on Facebook at Sister Moon Store or on the web at sistermoon.shop. So fly on over and stop in for a spell. Okay, we are back. And just a couple of... uh, quick items I want to share with everybody. Um, The Metaphysical Times newspaper is a fantastic publication. Uh, I am now a part of that. I'm one of their distributors for the Midwest region. So if you need a copy of the Metaphysical Times, reach out to me. I'll get you one. Otherwise, you can uh, go directly to Metaphysical Times and You'll be able to uh, contact them directly to get a subscription. You can even sign up, become a distributor as well. All you have to do is just go to metaphysical-times.com and you'll be able to get in contact directly uh, with uh, Christy, who is, well, I still consider her to be one of my co-hosts, uh, but uh she has got her hands full with uh, trying to make things work out smoothly for with the paper. Uh, she's working behind the scenes, which I do appreciate a lot. Um, so if you definitely would like a copy, uh, subscription, or even become a distributor, go to metaphysical-times.com and to sign up. She'll be happy that you did. And with Sister Moon, they have changed their Tarot Tuesday uh, from during the daytime to during the evenings now. And I know a lot of their followers already are aware of this, but I wanted to get that out there. In case you are interested in Tarot Tuesdays with Sister Moon, uh, they are doing it during the evenings now instead of the daytime. All right, now getting back to our conversation walking a ancient spiritual path. The one reason why I am so set on wanting to help educate people so that I can make people aware that of how our ancestors used to live back in, uh, back in the old days, back on the prairies, living off the land, uh, paying respect to Mother Earth, and using what uh, Mother Earth gives us to sustain ourselves. That's something that I truly and seriously believe in. And if you ever have questions, please feel free to reach out anytime. And you can uh, contact me either through Facebook under uh, Earl Silver Wolf Williams or else uh, via email at earl at iapnradio.net. You can also contact me through the business page for IAPN Radio. Anytime with any questions that you may have, 
I always love getting emails. I love getting direct messages. I love people just coming to talk to me and to get to know more about what it is to be pagan. Um, if they're, if we have people out there wanting to reach out to learn about their spiritual path, I'm right here anytime. I do have connections with other people who I can refer them to, uh, to refer you to as well. Um, because if you have specific questions and if I don't have the answers, I know where to send you to get those answers for you. So I, this is my entire job here at IAPN radio is to make people aware of how people did things back in the past and also what we have going on today. And this includes the music books, literature, uh, recommending good places to find supplies. Uh, in fact, uh, just today, uh, Becca from Tuatha put out a post that Tuatha now has their vinyl records available for their latest uh, album release, which is Irish Eyes. It is now on vinyl, folks. So for all vinyl lovers, go get yourself a copy. I've already done told Becca that I want to get my hands on a copy as well. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> so I had, so one thing that uh, I have loved about my job here is developing the connections, the friendships and the rapport is that people know that when I reach out to them, uh, they are very happy. They'll happily get back in touch with me. Uh, they'll respond to my questions and uh, the suggestions and input and uh, everything. That's what I love about the friendships I have discovered along the way. So with that being said, I appreciate everyone uh, joining me in chat. And this will be up on YouTube uh, in a little while. This will also be going out on Podbean shortly afterwards as well. And so, again, if you have questions for me, feel free to reach out anytime at Earl at IAPN Radio. Pleasant journeys, everyone. Have a good weekend. I know that... Uh, yeah, it's kind of rainy here in the Midwest right now, but it's supposed to clear up uh, by Sunday through the week next week. So I'm really hoping that I'll be able to get outside and do some more videos for everybody and get some uh, work done as well. <laughs> with that, I'll wish everyone pleasant journeys. Have a good weekend, everyone. And thank you for tuning in. I'll be back again here with you next week with more from IAPN Radio and Freeland Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. All shows are recorded and available for download at plrdn.podbean.com. All rights are reserved and may not be replayed without written permission by IAPN Radio Management. Come join us at our new group, IAPN Radio on Facebook, where you can be kept up to date for future broadcasts. Pleasant journeys, everyone.